Hello everyone. So we have already seen about the introduction to FPD and more to topics from fixed partial ledger. Now moving on towards the components of it. So starting with the first component that is the retainers. So now what is the definition? So the definition it says that it is a part of the fixed partial prosthesis that unites the abutments to the remainder of the restoration and this definition it is given by glossary of prosthodontic terms 8. Now in this diagram these are your abutments and this is the retainer. So the retainers they are the component of fixed partial dentures that goes and sit on this abutment. So it is a part of the fixed partial prosthesis that unites the abutment to the remainder of the fixed partial prosthesis or restoration so over here now this is the pontic so pontic is the one which is replacing that edentulous space and these two are the retainers which goes and sit on this abutment so this retainers they are what they are doing is they're uniting this abutment to the rest of the restoration and over here the part that connects this pontic and the retainer it is known as connector so it is used for the stabilization or retention of the prosthesis now as the name says retainers so it does the work of retention that it is retaining or stabilizing your prosthesis so it is cemented to the abutment now this retainers they are cemented on this abutment so abutment they are prepared so there is truth preparation which is done the size of this abutments of your natural teeth which are present they are reduced and after that you are cementing this abutments so you are cementing the retainers on the abutment so now how are the retainers they are classified so basically there are three classification one is the amount of tooth coverage the next is mechanism of retention and third one is the materials which are used so the first classification is amount of the tooth coverage so it is classified into three that is complete coverage partial coverage and a conservative retainers so now as the name says complete coverage so it means that they cover all the surfaces of the abutment teeth and they are the ideal retainer as they provide the maximum retention now this is the complete coverage one so now you can see over here these are your abutment and this is the edentulous space so this retainer so these are your retainers and this is a pontic so these retainers they cover like all of the surfaces of the abutment and hence they are known as complete coverage or full veneers retainer as they are covering all the surfaces of the abutment and they are the ideal one because they provide maximum retention so they are the commonly used retainers of fpd and the retainers of choice for the extensively damaged abutment teeth so this is the diagram for it over here this is your prepared tooth and these are your like retainers and now you can see post operatively so this is like it is completely covering the abutment the next one is the partial coverage or partial veneer retainers so now this retainers they do not involve all the surfaces over here now you can see this surface it is not covered by the retainer so this is nothing but a partial now only some surfaces are covered by the retainer so compared to a full veneer retainer they require less amount of tooth preparation now over here it is partial coverage so because of that you are preparing the tooth comparatively less than the full veneers but now the prop problem in this partial is they have less retention because in this now you are preparing the tooth minimally so because of that retention it is compromised and they have superior aesthetics so it is depending on the surface area which is covered so they can be termed like there are various terms for it so it can be three fourth crown or it can be four fifth crown or seven eighth crowns so this is like how much area or surfaces are covered by this so this is a partial coverage retainers or partial veneer retainer and the next one is a conservative retainers so these retainers they require minimal tooth preparation over here now this are your resin bonded retainers and this is the edentulous area so this is the pontic over here and this is your retainer so this is a conservative retainer so this requires minimal tooth preparation and they are primarily indicated in the case of anterior teeth because of aesthetics so they cannot like accept high occlusal load for example now in case of this resin bonded retainers so this is a conservative now you can see the, they are prepared so the retainers they are prepared conservatively so they are basically used in the anterior for the cases of aesthetics now the next classification is mechanism of retention so it is classified into three extra coronal intra coronal or radicular now radicular is nothing but when you are taking the support from the roots so that becomes your post and core so this is a radicular type now extra coronal you are taking the retention extra coronally so outside your crown and intra coronal is when you are taking the support intra coronary that is inside the crown that is in the case of inlay so over here now this is the diagram for 
FPD, which is retained by the help of inlay. So extra coronal, they are obtaining the retention from the external surface of the coronal part of the abutment teeth. So example are your full veneer crowns or partial veneer crowns. Then intra coronal ones, they obtain the retention from within the coronal tooth structure. So example, they can be your inlays. So this is about the mechanism. The next classification is depending on the material which is used. So it can be all metal, metal ceramic, all ceramic or acrylic. So now all metal is, it can be either partial or it can be full coverage. So they possess good strength as they are made up of complete metal. So as the name says, it is all metal. So whole of your retainer it is made up of metal. So because of that, they have good strength. But the problem is they are compromising the aesthetic because they don't look good. So this is like a metal one. So they won't look good if they are placed on anterior. So they can be used only for the posterior. And this all metal, they require minimal tooth preparation. Now the next one is metal ceramic. So it is most commonly used. It is indicated in both anterior and posterior. So this is like a metal ceramic. So the inner portion that is the lingual portion. It is made up of metal because over here now if it, metal is exposed buccally. So it will compromise the aesthetic. So what you do is you place ceramic like on the buccal and the labial surface and you are placing on, on the lingual surface or the metal is on the posterior part and you are placing the ceramic on the anterior part. So this is a metal ceramic. So it is the most commonly used. So ceramic, it can be either a facing or it can be a full coverage. So it can be like this. So for example, now this is a all ceramic one. So if it is a metal ceramic, so what happens is, so over here, now this is full coverage ceramic and inside you will see it is made up of metal. So the facing would be of metal and it is covered by the ceramic all over. Now in this, they require more tooth preparation when you're comparing it with the all metal retainers. The next one is all ceramic retainers. So they are like the most aesthetic one and they require maximum tooth preparation and they also provide the best aesthetic but the strength it is compromised in such cases. So this is a all ceramic and all ceramic they are comparatively expensive than the all metal because of the like material itself. The next one is the acrylic. So this acrylic it can be used as a temporary fixed partial dentures and they cannot be used as a definitive partial dentures because of their poor strength, color instability, inadequate wear resistance and poor tissue response. So because of that, this acrylic retainers, they can be used only as in the temporary fixed partial dentures. Now the last part is the criteria for the selection of this retainer. So it is dependent on this five or six criteria that is the abutment angulation, then the condition of your abutments, aesthetics, preservation of the tooth structure, retention and cost. So first one is abutment angulation. So in case where the abutments are parallel to each other, so in that case what you can do is you can use a full veneer retainers as they have a single path of insertion is obtained. So now these are your abutment. Now they are placed parallel to each other. So in this case, this retainers, they can be a full veneer retainers as there is a single path of insertion. Now in this case, when your abutment, it is tilted, any of the abutment, it is tilted. So what you can do is if the abutment, they are non-parallel, which is owing to unfavorable tooth position. So in that case, you're using a partial veneer retainer along with a, another partial or full veneer retainer. And it can be used to get a single path of prosthesis insertion. Now, path of insertion is basically how you place and remove the prosthesis. So you want a single path of insertion. So in this case, what you do if the tooth, if the angulation of the abutment, it is tilted. So in that case, what you do is you use a partial veneer crown. The next is the condition of the abutment. So in this, if the abutment teeth, they are in good health in terms of both periodontium and caries, a partial veneer retainer, it can be considered as a treatment option. Now, if the tooth or the abutment, it is good in case of periodontial, that is the periodontal support is good. And even there are no caries. So in that case, you can use a partial veneer retainer. But if in the case that the abutment, it is endodontically treated or it is extensively damaged, in that case, you have to go for a full veneer retainer. Now, if the abutments, they are periodontally weak. So with the exposure of the root surface. So in that case, what you do is you're going for the conservative resin bonded retainers. Now, the next condition or the criteria is the aesthetics. So though the partial veneer retainers, they may not involve the facial surface. Their use in aesthetic zones can be questionable when the teeth, they are thin and the metal, it can be reflected. So in this, the secondary caries is also a possibility because of the open margin. So in such cases, a full veneer retainers can be used. So aesthetics where now in aesthetics, what you're doing is anteriorly you place a full ceramic 
or ceramic basically material it should be ceramic because aesthetic is important the next one is the preservation of the tooth structure so in this now the partial veneer preservation they are more conservative than the full veneer preservation the buckle or the facial surfaces of the teeth they should be preserved for the natural aesthetics so you are preserving the buckle and the facial surfaces then the choice it should be made depending on all the factors for the longevity of the prosthesis now even etched cast retainers it can be a thought of a conservative alternative so you can like choose a alternative to a conservative that is a etched cast retainers now the next criteria is the retention so molar it exerts more force when it is compared to premolar thus it requires more retention so longer this span greater is the retention which is required now in both the cases a full veneer retainers they often better retention now if you want to like replace a molar so in that case what you need to do is you have to use a full coverage retainers and if the span the edentulous span is longer so again in that case you have to go for a full coverage retainer and the last criteria is the cost now full veneer all ceramic retainers they are recommended in the case of anterior tooth replacement it is full veneer and ceramic so because of that it is used as anterior but now they are more expensive when you are comparing it with the metal ceramic and the facing retainer now hence if the cost is a factor then you can go for a metal ceramic restoration it can be considered in the anterior region and all metal restoration they are considered in the posterior region so when the patient they have the problem of course so what you can do is you can go for metal ceramic in anterior where you make a facing of the ceramic on the labial and the buccal surfaces and then what you do is you go for a complete metal like abutment retainers in the posterior region so this is about the criteria for the selection of retainers so these are your six criteria that you have to remember that when you are going for retainers how they should be it depends upon all these factors this was all about the retainers now in the next video i'm going to cover about the pontic and about the connectors and after that i'm going to go for the tooth preparation of the abutments